last few hundred years, people have been learning Chassidus. Chassidus Chabad. And uh, this exercise of learning Chassidus is unique, is, is special. Because learning Chassidus, certainly the Haskalah of Chassidus, the mysticism, the philosophy of Chassidus, is trying to understand Ruchnius, to, trying to understand spiritual things. To use a classic Chabad terminology, to have a derher, to have a sense of, to relate to in some way a Ruchnius idea. Uh, of course, there's always the limitation that's called Yediyas HaMetzias as opposed to Yasagas HaMahus. Spiritual things, metaphysical things, Achrei HaTeva, one cannot know as really as he knows a material and a physical thing because he's a material and a physical person. Nevertheless, an enormous amount of effort goes into having a derher, having some kind of a sense of what Ruchnius is. In other words, before Chassidus there was Kabbalah, but Kabbalah was from Mekubalim, Baile HaKabbalah, Oiskim Kabbalah. Mekubalim are spiritual people. Seriously spiritual people. In other words, not people who are involved in spirituality, but people who are actually spiritual. Ruchni is like a people. Anoshem Ruchnim. Spiritual people relate to spirituality, to Ruchni, because that's their world. And being a spiritual person and relating to spirituality actually means that even though this person is an Ashama Baguf, is physically living, and in as much as he's physically alive, his neshama is in the containment and the container of the guf, moyach lev, kaveh, the mind and the heart and the senses, which are very limiting. A spiritual person has a relationship to ideas, to realities that are beyond what the mind can know and the heart can feel and the senses can sense, because at least to some extent, in some limited way, or perhaps not so limited a way, he can relate to spirituality directly. He has a certain access to spirituality in spite of the hindrance of the body, of the goof. But of course the whole idea of Hasidus was to bring Pnimiyas Atoida, was to bring the spirituality of Yiddishkeit to non-spiritual people, to ordinary people, to plain people, to regular people, whose containment within the body and the mind and the heart and the senses is absolute. They're limited to what they can understand and feel and experience. And yet in Chassidus, through the vehicle of Chochmah bin Avadas, through the tool of learning and understanding, and of course very, very much relying on illustration and metaphor, particularly the mushal of Mibisari Yaksalaka, using a person's body, a person's humanity to understand Ruchni Yizdika things, mystical things, spiritual things, godly things, people, Anoshim Kerkenu, ordinary folk, are trying to relate to and understand Ruchnius, spirituality and godliness, or Lakus. And that's really where the refinement, the edelkeit, the sensitivity in Lima de Hasidus lies. It's not that hard to figure out the map, the Kabbalistic order of things. It's also quite complicated, but that's exactly what it is, it's complicated. The effort, the endeavor, the hours and hours and hours that the Chassid sits and thinks, are not dedicated to figuring out what level goes where on the map. It's trying to sense the spirituality about which they're learning in some indirect way. And of course, when we talk about Ruchnius, when we talk about spirituality, when we talk about the idea that in Chassidus Chabad, people whose greatest attribute is their mind, whose greatest conscious tool is their intellect and they're not consciously in touch with their neshama, with their soul, with their spirituality which would give them direct access to spirituality through the mind they're trying to have a sense of what Ruchnius is and to have an experience of what Ruchnius is and have that transform them uh, make them into a different human being based on this connection to Ruchnius and Talukus and in this pursuit, in this effort of course, there's so much to learn, there's so much to contemplate, there's so much to think about, there's so much to try and relate to. At the core of it all, at the essence of it all, is the word oir. Oir, lichtigkeit, light. 
or Oyrein Seif, the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Oyrein Seif, the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And as you may or may not know, there's an enormous amount of discussion in Hasidus about understanding the very definition of the words, Oyer Ein Seif. As the Memorim love to point out, it's not Oyer Shel Ein Seif, but Oyer Shehu Atzme Ein Seif. Oyer Ein Seif means a light, not a reflection that's coming from something other, which is Ein Seif, but a light that is in and of itself Ein Seif. So you have to define what Oyer means, you have to define what Ein Seif means, and so on. In short, and said very simply, or even simplistically, Oyrein Seif is a reflection of, of Hashem, of Alakus, of Alakah, of the Yebishter. The source, with a capital S, is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is the Yebishter. And from that source, we, there's a reflection. And that reflection reflects the source like any reflection would reflect any countenance, just like physically, a human being. You can make a photograph, a picture of a person. You can look at a person's face and see their countenance. The light of that person, the picture of that person, the reflection of that person is a perfect replica of what the person himself is. And on the reflection or through the reflection, you know everything about the source, about the person that is being reflected. So, there's a concept called Oyer, light, which is a reflection of more the source with a capital S, which goes on Alaka, on Alaka, on Hashem, so to speak. And the oil is me'ein amar. The oil, the oil of ain safe reflects what the yebishter is. Now, of course, this is very complicated. What does that mean? That there is an Hashem and that Hashem has light. All of these things are very, very involved. And in addition to trying to understand what Hashem means and what Hashem's light means, you also need to understand why we need it. What's the point? of adding this concept of godliness, the light of HaKadosh Baruch which is a perfect reflection of what al is. And as I've told it to you many times, using the Kabbalistic paradigm as opposed to the non-Kabbalistic paradigm, there are three or four points. The first is called Bayre, the creator. The last is called Nivra, the creation. And then there's something which is not creator anymore and not creation yet. It's a below what the creator is, and but it's above a creation. And this is called Ma'atzeh l'ne'etzal. Eitzel, Aleph Tzadik Lamed. And of course the word Eitzel means near. The word Eitzel means a reflection. The word Atzilos comes from the word Eitzel. And this is of course the word that you have in the Chumash, in Pachas Baleischa, Ve'atzalti min aruach asher alecha, Ve'atzalti alehem. This is where the word Atzilos, where the word emanation, appears in the Chumash, in the Chumash, in the Chumash itself, in the, in the Tereshim in the Chumash. And this concept of light, oir ain't safe, is a reflection of what the Ebishter is. It's not the creator, it's not Hashem himself, but it's not a creation, it's simply a reflection of a lukus. And there are many, many, many reasons why it is so important to understand the concept of a lukus, of godliness, in addition to the concept of a laka, which means the source of the godliness. And one of them is that the difference between the light and the source is that light is interactive. Just like physically, light travels from point A to point B and it illuminates, as opposed to the source that stays in one place. Kvayochel, Lahavdal, Lamaila. Similarly, Hashem is a Metzias, built in Metzias, Nimtzah, But because there is a concept of Oir, there is an idea that something can reach a creation which comes from HaKadosh Baruch. And as a result of this, a human being can have a real intimacy with Hashem. But the intimacy that he's having with Hashem and the experiencing of Hashem that he knows that is so real and important in Pnimi Yisateir, Chochmah Zakabola, and Teir Sachasidas, as opposed to uh, theological systems that are not Kabbalistic and not Hasidic, is not relating to Hashem himself because Hashem cannot be experienced. He's relating to Hashem Linis, to the light of Hashem which can be experienced. And so much of what a yeshiva bacha does and then what a chesidah sheyid does in learning chesidahs is asking the question over and over and over again, what is oir? What is light? And as many times as you answer the question, the question is re-asked. Because at a certain point, it stops being a question about the technicalities of it, the philosophical rules that define what light is and why you have to have a metaphor from the sun we have to have another metaphor from the Nisham and the Guf. We have to have two Mashalim and so on and so forth. There's so much to be said. But at a certain point, it stops being a 
a study that's trying to appreciate the, the pathology of Eid, if I use that word, and it becomes an exercise into having a dead head in what Eid is, to have a sense of what Eid is. Because when you learn about Eid stuff, like I said, there's so many discussions, but one of the things that's very obvious about Eid stuff is that on the one hand, whatever Hashem is, is in His Eid, that makes Eid incredible. On the other hand, nothing of what Hashem is, is in the Eid. The light is a reflection of Him, and as such, whatever He is, is in the light. But the light is only a reflection of Him. In the Lashon HaChasidus, Eir comes from Moed Memele. Light is not given by a source. When you give somebody a glass of water, that's not called oil, that's called Shefa. And there's effort to go over to a sink and to open up the faucet and to let the water fall into the cup and then to walk across the room and hand it to that person. And when you put the water in front of that person, that water is no longer in the sink. It goes from one place to another and is lost from the first place. So the cup of water would be Shefa and the person delivering the cup would be Mashpia. And all of this involves Tfisa, the, the giver of the cup of water cannot do something else at the same time. And the same is true, of course, ideas. Ideas that are communicated from a teacher to a student are also Shefa and the Mashpia. That means the teacher is Nitfas in Dashpa as is being Mashpia to a Mushpa, to a Makabal, to a recipient, to a student. But when we talk about Eid and Moed, light in relationship with the source, the source is not giving the light, the source is simply ising, simply being. And the light emanates and radiates from the source passively, just like your countenance, the way you look, your appearance. It's not something you need to announce. Simply by being, your appearance is wherever you are. And it's reflected and seen by others. Similarly, Oyer, the light of Elokuz, is a reflection of Hashem and wherever Hashem is, which is, of course, everywhere the light is present. So, so much effort and energy goes into understanding what is Eirin Saf, what is Getlichkeit, what is godliness. It's everything and nothing. It's the most important thing and it's totally superficial at the same time. I'm introducing this, not because I'm intending on explaining it. I'm introducing it because this is the topic of tonight's class. Explanations never finish. We've had many explanations on the concept of godliness. We will continue having explanations on the concept of godliness. In the final analysis, in the end of the day, to know, no, to know God, you have to be God. To know godliness, you have to be intimate with godliness. In the Lashna Chasidus, you have to be connected to the Madrega of Mahus. So long as one is limited to the reality of Metzias, the idea of Metzias is not knowing what a Lukus is ultimately. Nevertheless, so much of what we're concerned with is not understanding the, the pathology of it, like I said before, but having at the head of what a Lukus is, what godliness is, how something exists, which is a reflection of the Abish, that there's no Metzias other than its reflection of him. And that whatever he is is reflected in the aid, and on the other hand, it's not etzem at all. So I'm using this maimed. Because our maimed is going to be discussing aid, I allowed myself to spend these few minutes to revisit the concept of aid, and the controversy of aid, and the struggle of trying to understand it, because this is a topic which is always relevant. It's one of those questions, there's the oitcha story. You ask a question, you give an answer, you ask it again. You ask a question, you give an answer, you ask it again. Over and over and over again, because the question is not the question. The question is, I understand what you said, but I don't understand. I got the mathematics, I heard it, I understand it, but at that head and elokus to have a sensitivity to godliness, this is an exercise which doesn't happen by intellect, or doesn't happen by intellect alone. It has to happen through avedis atfila, through labor, through personal introspection, through refinement of self, and eskafia, and so on. Someone that had an elokus to have a sense of what get lachait is. Now to get to the maimed, this is our third class on the maimed as Rabbi Tishmeru, which is initially and ultimately a Shabbos maimed. The idea of Shei Shabbos Shal Shabbos every Shabbos is two madrigas. And in order to get us to the concept of Shei Shabbos Shal Shabbos, we began a discussion about Yiridis and Neshama Lamata and Yiridis Seirah The idea that a Neshama, which is to start with very close to godliness, very close to God, goes through a Yerida, Me'igra, Ramo, Labira, Amikdot, comes down into this world because of the advantage of Yerida, Tzayda, Chaliyah, the ascent, the benefit that the Neshama will derive by descending so that it will ultimately ascend to a level higher than the level to which it descended in the first place. Yerida, Tzayda, In order to explain to us 
the justice of Yenid Yisera Chaliyah, in order to help us understand what an Neshama is to start with, and that when Neshama comes into this world, it's severely and seriously and significantly compromised, so that it should reach a higher level than the Neshama was before, Yerida Yisera Chaliyah, to, to go down from where it is, which is a good place, to a not such a good place, so it can ascend to even a higher place, the Rebbe first elaborated on where the Neshama is to start with. In other words, if you want to understand the Yerida Yisera Chaliyah, you have to understand Hayerida Me'efei. Where is the Neshama descending from? And the Maimir argued that the place where the Neshama starts out before the Yerida is very lofty, it's very high. The place where the Neshama starts out before it descends initially into this world is so high that you can ask the question, why bother? Why take a neshama, which is as it is such a wonderful place, bring it into this world, put it through so much risk and danger and possible failure, called Rachem and so on and so forth, for the sake of Aliyah, the neshama to start with was on a very high level. And in explaining this, he compared and contrasted Malachim from Neshamas. Malachim are a lower level, Neshamas are a higher level. Malachim's relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is more limited. Neshamas' relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is much higher. And having explained the advantages of Malach, the Shamas of a Malach, the souls over angels, which left you with the argument, why bother bringing the Neshama down into this world? Is it not true that the Neshama was already in a high place earlier? So he brought the idea of Ukdeshim Bechal Yehim El that a Yid's Neshama, a Yid, a Neshama is called Kadesh, and he's in a position to praise HaKadosh Baruch who constantly doesn't have any limitations, which is the mile of the Neshama. Says the Rebbe on line 109. Let's go into the text now. In other words, now that I gave this introduction, let's go to the Maimir, where the Maimir in last week's class underscored the advantage of the Neshama Lamailo. And nevertheless, on the Kamukim, nevertheless, Nem and Aleyim, it's written about the Neshama, Beirigdesh, that the Neshama is created. And you'll see at the end of today's class the significance of this word, Beriya, Beirig, created. Kedeshim. But it's created to be holy. In other words, even as it's a created entity, it's in a state of Kedusha, in a state of holiness. And again, at the end of today's class, you'll discover that this is the Madriga Sachochma and Yishtabach Shimcha. That it praises, that it sees the advantage of and can exalt the name of HaKadosh Baruch. Says the Rebbe Hainu. And this justifies the Yiddish Serech Aliyah. Shem kol shel shamas. Even though we've just underscored just how praiseworthy and special. On the Shama is the whole beginning of the all the levels of holiness that it's b'chukdeshim b'chol yem yaluchah sel constantly ascending and praising Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Still, ain't no mekablum or masigim. This neshama is lofty as it is to start with. <coughs> Pardon me, cannot reach and access, access and reach. El lo bebechinas shmei yisbarach bovad the name of Hashem alone. And that's the meaning of the words yishtabach shimcha. This holy. Neshama is able to praise and see the advantage of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is not HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. In other words, the name of Hashem, which is a level that Neshama is able to relate to, Lamaila is able to praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But Hashem himself is beyond the capacity of the Kadesh, which is the Neshama. It's written all over the Shas, that a Neshama in Ganeidin has a delight from the rays of the Shekhinah. The rays of the Shekhinah is the same thing as the name of HaKadosh Baruch Says the Rebbe on line 113, The word shame, the word name, as it's found in this part of Tefillah, it's part of the first Baruch of Bechaz Krishma, is the same thing as the word Eir, and the language of the Kabbalah of the Arizal is called Eir Ein Seif. The light, not light that comes from Ein Seif, but light that is itself Ein Seif because of the principle of Eir Ein Amor, the light reflection of the source. So Yishtabach Shimcha means that Neshamas Yisrael praise the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but only the name and not Hashem Himself. And therefore the Neshama has to come down and go up to an even higher level in order to have a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is even hardening in Hashem. In the language of Kabbalah, the idea of a name and the idea of a light are the same thing. Now I gave you about 10, 12 minutes on the concept of Eir, light. Here in our Maimir, the Rebbe first used the terminology shame, a name. And he says that the concept, the mystical concept of shame, of a name, is very similar to the mystical concept of Eir. Now the way this works in Mamari Hasidus is that in general they're the same. But Klolos, the concept of shame and the concept of Eir are similar. The name of a person is not the person, it's only what the person, is need, the person needs in order to interact with others, a reflection of the person. 
The light of Hashem is not Hashem, it's a reflection of Him. So on the one hand, it's reflecting entirely, on the other hand, it's totally superficial and outside of what the essence is. But when you go deep enough into the Maimari Hasidus, you will find that Shem and Eid are not the same, they're quite different. In other words, only basically, only on a general level of analysis and study would you say that the word Shem, which is the name of HaKadosh Baruch and the word Eid, which is the light of HaKadosh Baruch are synonymous and one and the same. Because the word Eid does not in any way connote an Iyanet Atzmi. Light is not an essence, it's a reflection. Shame, on the other hand, even though it's also hard, it does reflect an Indian Atzmi. Like we know from Chesidus that the name of a person reflects the essence of the person, and by calling a person you wake him up from a state of faint, and the name is the code and the key to the whole Neshama, and so on and so forth. So there really are differences between shame and Eir. The word shame, the word name, is actually ultimately deeper than the word Eir. But our Maimir generalizes, and doesn't go into these specifics, and says that the word shame and the word Eir are synonymous, and when you say, Yishtabach Shimcha, Beirik Deish, Yishtabach Shimcha, Hashem created Nishamas, that are praising the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the argument is that they're praising, quote, only, end quote, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but not Hashem Himself. They're relating only to the air, they're relating to the Yetzim. Line 114, Peter, the light of the Son of Meil, which radiates and shines to the earth and those who dwell upon the earth. And the light leaves the sun and comes to the earth. And of course, you've heard the whole discussion. The light doesn't really care if it's cloudy or it's not cloudy, if it's reaching the earth or not reaching the earth because it's memela and it's only ha'ara from the Shemesh. But to us, of course, it's most important that it shouldn't be cloudy, it shouldn't be overcast, and the light of the sun should reach the earth. Shuziva ha'ara mimena, that the sun's rays are a reflection, a trace, a reflection of what the sun is. V'nech of la'ayin ve'efes, it's considered nothing, l'gabi etzam ha'shemesh, in comparison to the sun itself, shumakeire edvazi, which is the source of the light. So as incredible as the sun's light is, and we see what the sun's light does to the earth, without the sun's light there'd be no life, there'd be no heat, there'd be no warmth, there'd be no life. Yet, when comparing it to the sun itself, it's only a reflection. Similarly, the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the ain't safe light, it's a reflection of Atzmas and Hus on the one hand, it's incredible, on the other hand, it's quote only, end quote, a reflection. Ach'ein shum, shinu, be'etzam ha'shemesh, when it comes to the sun itself, it makes no difference. It may it any Allah audit of the light is reaching the earth and serving a purpose, or yem yachshichu ha'avim, or the clouds will blacken it out, or she'astiru chaleni abayas, or the windows will be blocked and prevent the light from entering into the room. For la'yum shach shum, the light will not be drawn into that environment, to that place, to that circumstance, says the Alter Rebbe, Amy calls it, Shum Shinu Klaal B'moyer Hashem, which the sun doesn't care. Because the sun produces light, but Derech Mamele, passively, that's the downside. The upside is that it's a perfect reflection, Me'ein Amoyer, and the downside is that it doesn't care. Kach, similarly, line 118, Pirish Eidin Saf, the light of Hashem, which is called Ein Saif, which is really the agony, the struggle, the yagi of any person who's learning chsidis, is like bechinas ha'ara mispashat v'nimshach. It's a ray, a reflection, which is drawn. Mimeni is barach from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Then on the one hand, it's ain't safe, and the other hand, it's only ha'ara. Ve'hine, line 119. Ha'ara me rabim. This reflection, this light. Even this light as it goes through various different simtsumim, which means that directly you cannot know it. It says that Rebbe, when the light of Ein Seif goes to various Timtsumim, it reaches low enough for an Ishama, which is called Kedeshim, to relate to the light of the Ein Seif. And of course, the argument is it's relating only to the light of the Ein Seif, and it's not relating to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Says the Rebbe Vezeo Pirish Ishtabach Shimcha. That's the meaning of an Ishama being able to praise the name, the shame of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, when you compare Nishamas to Malachim, a Malach is called Yetzim Misharsim and Asher Misharsim, and a Nishama is called Bayrik Doishim. So naturally, the Nishama's access to godliness and its ability to understand it, to apprehend it, and to sense it, and to appreciate it, and to praise it is much greater than that of a Malach, of an angel. But at the same time, the only access that the Nishama has is to Shimcha, is to Shema Yizbarach, the light of Hashem, the name of Hashem, but not to Atzmasimus. This very idea, which is called in the language of the with the word oir, light, shame, is in other svar, in Midrash, Chazal, and so forth, called with the word name. Which is, of course, a classic Midrash. It uses the terminology 
Actually, never had Elam prior to creation. Hoya Kodesh Baruch Hu Shmei Hagadol Bulvad. Hoya Hu Shmei Bulvad Hashem and Shmei Hagadol existed Bulvad alone. And of course, it's understood in Chassidus. There's so many discussions based on this Pirkei Dera Balazer that Shmoi means Oyer. That before the Abish created the world, a locus godliness. Certainly, the Madregas of godliness, which are not. Mechudish, but Kadmin, Kekadmuse, Yokmei Kadmei Yehad, which are Gilad Etainis, also existed. So what's called in one context, in one Sefer, shame, it's called in a different Sefer, Eid, and they're the identical idea. And again, I already mentioned that it's not that simple, because there are significant differences between the word shame and Eid, but our Maimer doesn't go into those aspects. Our Maimer simply addresses the fact that the name of a person is not the person at all, it's simply a vehicle, a base yad, a handle by which you can identify the person. Just like the light is not the source, it's a reflection or an achiza, a base yad, by which you can have the source. The differences are not addressed at all. It says the Rebbe on line 124, However you enlighten it, it's all one place and one idea. And what is this idea? To understand the vitality of godliness, the vibrancy, the life of godliness, which give life to all of the worlds. And of course, when you talk about the relationship between godly life and light in all of the worlds, there's two very seriously distinct ideas. The first is the life and light needed for the creation. And the second, the light and life which is needed for the fulfillment of the purpose of the creation. And obviously the purpose of the creation is deeper and higher than the light and life of the creation itself. Here the Rebbe talks about creation, and he states, the light of Hashem, the name of Hashem, Hashemliness, godliness as we so frequently call it, is a perfect reflection of Him on the one hand, and it doesn't touch and it doesn't make a change in Atmos, what we call Hashem Himself, whatsoever. Rakir is only, Shekol Medrash Medaber B'lesheina Acher or Moshal Acher. Every Medrash uses a different form and a different illustration. Or Kumesh HaKosov, like we find, Vaidaber Shleisha Salof and Moshal, there's 3,000 analogies. And of course, one of the ways of understanding this Pasuk, Vaidaber Shleisha Salof and Moshal, is that every idea has 3,000 different analogies. Not that there is 3,000 different analogies which Shleim HaMelech said during his lifetime but rather that every single concept can be explained in 3,000 different ways, should be no surprise that one text will call godliness oil and a different text will call godliness shame, they're one and the same. We can actually find references in Psukim, in Kra, in Teresh Sav, for the idea that godliness is called Shmeis of Shalak Kaddish Baruch or the names of HaKadosh Baruch. So let's pause and talk about this just a little bit. Again, no long speeches, but basics. This is really basics. That, of course, we have the wonderful question, how could Hashem have a name? A name is a definition. A name in the Lashon HaKhsir is a tire, describes, a name describes. Like it says in Tanya, it's going to be mentioned momentarily here, the Hebrew name of a person, Avraham, Alaveiz, Ramesh, Heim, Mem, or Yosef, Yitzchak, which is my name, Yud, Vav, Samach, Pei. Yud Tzadik has kuf, those oasis have a certain chayes, and the, the life, the vibrancy, the energy of the creation uh, that has that name. And the name is the source of crea- creation and the life of each being. Each person's name is the basis for their own existence. And the reason this person has this name, another person, has a different name because the name has to do with their personality and their character. And therefore the question of course becomes, how could you say, Be'akadosh Baruch Hashem, how can you say Hashem has a name? Hashem is completely beyond any definition, so it's beyond having a name. So the Medrash answer is, Kifi Maisei Ani Nikra, that the names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu don't reflect what He is, they reflect His relationship with the world. Of all the names, the most famous and the most lofty is Shem Havaya, the divine name Yud Kei Havaya, which means a variety of different things. One of them is that it's creation, creator, one of is that it actually exists. But the most familiar translation of Shem Havaya is that Shem Havaya is the name that reflects the Oyer, the Ein Sof, the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not Hashem himself, but his light. That's how Kabbalah works. Chassidus has to explain it and struggles with it. There's a very nice Hemshech from Shvuas Reish and Vav, which is the same Hemshech as Pesach Reish and Zion, where the Rebbe Rashab goes into Shem Havaya, Barich Gedeil, and explains a variety of different levels and so on. But the minute you give the Ebishter a name, you're not talking about the Ebishter anymore because you cannot give a name to something 
which is an atzmi, which is absolute, which is infinite, and without a definition. And therefore the names of Hashem are not describing Him, they're describing His relationship with the world. And the most lofty aspect of that concept of a relationship between the Ebishter and the world is, um, is Eirin Saf, is godliness, is the godly light. And the Rebbe says on line 129, When you give somebody a name of Ram, so that name defines that person and it brings forward that person, Varaya, when you call him by that name, he can be woken up from a faint, you can identify him, you can distinguish him from others and so on. At the same time, the comparison between the name of the person and the person himself is such that the name of the person is totally peripheral and superficial compared to the person himself. Having a person's name, like Avraham, is not at all comparable to having Avraham himself. And the name, in fact, doesn't touch what that person is in and of himself because you only need a name for the purposes of interaction. Hashem only needs light for purposes of interaction with the world. A name has to do with something outside of the essence. And again, there are differences between shame and aid, and there are many discussions about shame is and what aid is, but for the purposes of this conversation, they're identical. The life of a person is in his name, notwithstanding that the name is so much less than what the person in his essence is. Still, the name is very deep. On the one hand, the name is just an external handle on what the person is. On the other hand, the name is the highest, is the life of the person himself. This is, of course, a classic medrash that it says in the tale about other Marishan, God Almighty brought all the animals, all the behema and the chaya and the eif, the domestic animals, wild animals, and birds. To other magician, Liris Mayikrale to see what names he would give them, and the Pasik announces, the Pasik declares, the Khalasha Yikrleha Adam Nefesh Chaya, whatever name all the magician gave to each living creature, whose Shmay is the correct name. And the Drashim explained that Avram Avinu, that the Malachim, the angels of God Valachi Asharas, could not name the various creations. They didn't have the intelligence to look at a physical creation and see the life and the oisias that sustain her or him. Adam Rishon had that intelligence. That's what the Medrash says, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, that Adam Rishon is lefnim in Malachi Ashari, is a higher level than the Malachim, because it's able to identify by a physical creation its spiritual name, because the name has to do with its life and its essence. Harayeshayiches mamish, la'ashem el etzam adava. Thus, there's a relation between one's name and what that being is. Not just, it's not simply an arbitrary allusion, a way of referring to and identifying a person. You call him by a name. The name reflects the highest of the person. And at the same time, even though the name is so important to a person or to another creation, because it carries the whole life, the whole energy of that human being, at the same time, it's only chutzli at vahainu. And he explains in line 135. It says in Shari Yechad Vemunta in the Pei Kalaf, and of course it's repeated later again in Pei Kid Beis. This is the name by which each creation is known in Lashna Kedish in Hebrew, in the Holy Tongue. It is a vessel, it's a vehicle for the limited life which is manifest through the letters of that name, which originally comes from the first ten utterances, which involve all of creation to sustain a specific creation, both in terms of yesh miyayin, as well as in terms of yesh miyesh, both in terms of creating the gashri min aruchni, and both in terms of bringing the aruchni from a higher level to a lower level. And the same is true also by human beings. The Neshama in Gan Eden has no names. And of course, one of the proofs for this is that a Neshama reappears in this world, come up Yom, in a number of Gilgulim. And each time has a different name. And if the name had to do with the Neshama in Gan Eden, the name should have to be identical. Or another example, which is a basic Gishmak, which is that in Pashas, that Sava Meshad Abedu's name is never mentioned. And it's, the Rebbe brings out in the Sikhas. Why Pashas Tetzavah? Because Pashas Tetzavah is Zayin Nodr, always around Zayin Nodr, which is connected, of course, to this Talkas, to the Lul of Meshach Rabbeinu, and Meshach Rabbeinu passes away. He's raised up above a name. Nimtza thus, line 140, Hashem ain't a libchina son of Shama Atzma. The name is not necessary for the Neshama by itself, only in relationship with the world and other people. Vare gam leguf Atzma in Hashem el. Even for the body itself, you don't need a name. You only need a name to have a relationship with others. And therefore, a name is something superficial. 
Ach, line 41, on the other hand, even though a name is something outside of the Yetzim. Hashem, Mekash, and Hashem, Abaguf, the name ties the body and the soul. The life and the light and the energy that flows from the neshama, that's drawn down from the neshama to sustain the body has to do with the particular name of that particular creation. The Hainu, in other words, Reuven, the name Reuven, the person Reuven, is Be'esias Reish Aleph. The life is in the letters Reish Aleph and so forth, Yehu Mebechines Re'iyah, has to do with vision. Valeya and Leia, Machma Sheroso Hamais, as a consequence of seeing what happened, where she identified Ruma Bain Beniva Khulla Divinsin, her children and Asaf's children, Yoda Shesh Nishmas of Asia Shmay Ruven, she knew Ruha Kadesh that his name is uh Ruven. So the letters Resh Alevov Bayz Nun, and of course the shadish of those letters is the idea of Riya is the highest of Ruven's name. Of Reuven, Reuven from the 12th Shvat, Shifti Ka, the children of Yankav Avin. So on the one hand, the name is outside of the essence. On the other hand, the name is representative of what's most important in each creation, his very, very life. Line 146, the Hine. Kol dovera gorla Lachis shel imenu. Any time we're dealing with something which is higher, that needs to descend and limit itself. In order to bring life to something less than itself, this is called Tzimtzum. On the higher level, the light is stronger. On the lower level, the light is less. It's because what it delivers from its own higher station to the station of the Makabal, which is lower, is only its name. In other words, every creation has a level of itself which is superficial, and that's what it gives away. And the level of itself which is superficial is less than what it is by itself. If it was the only creation in the universe, it would not need a name altogether. For the purposes of revealing to all, you have to have a name. And he continues and he says, When one uses his name to reflect himself, to give of himself to another, he's not able to reveal or he isn't revealing what he is by himself. Only something superficial, something outside. So we see from this entire conversation that the letters of one's name, heim chumri, pardon me, the letters of one's name are chumri, whatever chumri means in this case. Ve'inam klum, and have no real worth when you're talking about the neshama in relationship with itself. That's a very little bit amount of life, which gives life to the body. So the Rebbe here wants to diminish the upside of shame. In other words, what I've been saying to you is that there's two sides to shame. On the one hand, the name is something totally outside of the etzim. On the other hand, the name carries the etzim and it gives identity to the one who carries the name. Here the Rebbe is saying the name is outside of the etzim and this name, which is outside of etzim, which in and of itself is of very little worth and significance, is enough to give life to the entire person, to the entire goof. The Hainu, this means, Kenei as it is known, Shaheir Vachayes Hamispashet Manasham Vaguf, the light and life which radiates from the Neshama as it is by itself, to bring from the Neshama into the body. The Hainu, in other words, Hachayes Hamispashet, the life and light which expands, radiates, Bechamach Evri Aguf, and manifests in each one of the 248 limbs of the body individually. It's not the very essence of the neshama, because the essence of the neshama, as it's discussed in Tanya chapter 51, is called Koyach Ruchni Echad Pashat. It's one infinite power, which is infinite and therefore cannot fit into a goof. So how does a neshama, which is infinite and one, give life to a body which is limited and complex and many? Because the only reflection of the neshama through many tzimtzums will come down into the goof. And this of the neshama that manages to leave what is the essence of the neshama to give life to the person is represented or is initially on the highest level the name of that person, of that creation. Concludes that Abba Lachain, therefore, Hashem Shayach. When does one need a name? When is a name significant? When is a name of worth? Dafka bislap neshama beguf. Only when the soul comes into a body. Sha'oz, when the neshama comes into the guf, nimshach or a neshama, a light, 
a radiation comes from the neshama, liyaspashet begof and manifests in the body, vezawai de bechinas Hashem, which is through the name of the person, which is the basis of the symptom, the way the neshama is in Ganeden, for the neshama is going to be when the neshama comes on into the goof. So the, nesh- the name is the character. Everybody has a different name. And the character of the person is in his name. But compared to the neshama, the name is something entirely superficial. A very small percentage of what the neshama is, is manifest in the name to give life to the body. So just like in the lakus, godliness, we use the word oyed, an alien self, that even though on the one hand it's a reflection of atmos, on the other hand it's a heart, it's only chitzenith. The same is true in name. It's something which is compared to the body, very important, it's the life of the whole body, but compared to the etzim of the neshama, to the neshama as it is by itself, it's superficial. It says the Rebbe on line 156, as opposed to the neshama before it comes into the body. The light of what is now the light and name of this nisham, what comes into this body, included in the essence of what that nisham is. And accordingly, inside the essence. It doesn't have a name. Only when something comes out of the neshama can there be a name. When it's inside the essence, it's above having a name. So you can only identify the life of a neshama with a name when the life of the neshama leaves the neshama in order to come into the body. But the life of the neshama, which is one with the neshama, since that life, that aspect of life, is so insignificant compared to the essence of the neshama, you would not identify that life as substantive, as significant in the context of the essence of the neshama. Therefore, you wouldn't say that in the essence of the neshama there's a name. Nimtza, in conclusion, move when Gamkin is also understood. The Inyan Hashem, who Gamkin al derech moshal the bechinas har of a A name, like a light which on the one hand reflects what the essence is, is totally peripheral, totally superficial compared to the essence. Which is totally irrelevant and unimportant to the neshama in its essence. And the same is true Oyer compared to etzem, Hashem himself is so removed from the day of Oyer that it is insignificant. It needs no name. Only when it comes out to give life to a body, which is a light, a life, which has to radiate out of her atmos, out of her pshitas, out of her achtos, to be in a guf. And then who are they Then it has a name. So names may be very important on the one hand, very great on the one hand, but they're very, very, very superficial on the other. And of course, remember the point we're going to get to by the Kedesh Mishtab Hashem Chaz Yossi Momentar. Line 163, let's continue now. It says, The same is true on high. We know that Hashem creates the worlds. And we know that Hashem gives life to the worlds. And of course, there's a very big difference between the concept of Havoyah. And Chayes, creation is Yesh Meyayin, and Chayes, giving life is only Yesh Meyesh. And of course, both of those things happen from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, B'chol Rega V'Rega, every single instant. Hashem is renewing the life of each creation, moreover, He's renewing the very reality of that creation itself. Argues the Rebbe that both of these things, the life of a particular creation, and the very reality of that creation, of Ha'elem is the world, the higher worlds and the lower worlds, Hurak B'Bechin Hashmei, it's all about Hashem's name alone. It doesn't touch the essence of the Abish at all. The world cannot receive from what Hashem is by Himself. Because what Hashem is by Himself is infinite. And therefore there's a series of symptoms of contractions. And what gives light and life and energy to the world is only from His name or from His light, which is a symptom and a reflection of what He is in His essence. For God, but there's more. When we say that the world cannot receive directly from the Abishta because it's too much, it's too potent, and therefore receives only from Hashem's name, there's another aspect, that even Bechinat Shmei, even when it comes to the name of HaKadosh Baruch, in other words, when it comes to the light, which is called Ein Seif, Ksiv the Pasuk says, Ki Niskav Shmei Levadi, even the name of HaKadosh Baruch was also removed from the worlds. The Hainu, in other words, Shesh Shmei Gamke, not only can creation not relate to him, creation can't even relate to his light directly. 
The high new shesh may gam kin even the name of a kaddish baruch the light of a kaddish baruch the reflection of a kaddish baruch any begadim mahava machaya klal is not yet close enough to the worlds to create them and give them life. Elu levadi it's by itself. Veniskov and it's exalted and removed. Made ala flogi yisera the word has gover doesn't mean simply above, but above in a way that's wondrous. Shum muflag harba melech and atzalim is altogether removed from the world, which are called netzal, which means atzilus, the world where godliness is revealed. Rak, if not only Hashem, but also Hashem linis, Hashem's life and light and energy are removed from a relationship with the world, what involvement does Hashem have in the world? And the answer is rak yehedel as a light. Of a name, a light of a light, the heart of the heart of the connection to the world. Pirish, this means Shanim Shahid Viziv Mishme. A ray, a reflection of what the Abish's name is, is drawn. Lechayes Eretz Vishamoyim to give life to earth and heaven, etc. So now we have two steps. Hashem himself is removed from the world. Hashem's name, Hashem's light is also removed from the world. And the investment is a heart of the heart, something very peripheral, very superficial. Vezehu, and this is the Pshat Vashim Chakadish. At a kaddish v'shem ha kaddish, the name of the Eved is removed. Shegam bechinas shem ha, even the name of a kaddish baruch who is kaddish a muvdal is removed. Umashenim shech bechinas b'malek alam, and what drawn from godliness to be revealed and to give vibrancy, vitality, life to the worlds is kemeish and hashem b'malek zaguf. Like the soul fills the body, is only harder the harder. It's a secondary. It's a light of a light. So not only is Hashem himself removed from Elamis, but the Eid is also removed from the Elamis. And only a Ha'ara, the Ha'ara, secondary light, reaches the world. And of course, this underscores the my love Eir, the my love shame, that it's ain't safe. But on the other hand, it also is the Chasarna of Eir and shame, because it's only a Ha'ara. Vezehu, when the Rebbe brings the Apostolic, Luchu Chazum of Aleis Hashem. Go ahead and examine the activities, the, what Hashem created, what Hashem did. Asher Shom Shom was bought us. That he placed on the earth shamus. The word shamus you will see later means desolation, nothing. This is a pasuk in the Luchu Chazum of Alsa Hashem. Hashem from shamus. But when the Abish created the world, he puts on the world shamus. Now, of course, this is very, very strange. Betilim simen memvav memzayin. He's been to the Gemara and Brachas. I think shamus al shamus that shamus doesn't shouldn't be read as desolation. It read as names of Hakadosh Baruch. And of course, the question is, how could the Abish did? As a creator, being described as Mephala Salakim, how Hashem is creating the world is called Shamas, which means uh, desolation. And the answer is going to be that Hashem creates the world, and the world that He creates is marvelous. But when you appreciate that all of the creation is only coming from a Ha'ara, compared to His essence, the investment of the Abish did in the world is Shamas, is totally superficial. And that's how we translate the word Shamas, that His investment is very, very limited and very, very peripheral and superficial. And nevertheless, it creates all of the worlds with the names of Akadosh Baruch. Hashem has many names. And here he doesn't translate the many names, like and so on, but many names that are all ain't safe. Whereas that the world cannot suffer, tolerate, and understand the light and life which is saved from Mamali. Hanim which comes to the great names of Agadish Baruch. Rak, the only way godliness can come from Hashem to worldliness in a way which is sustainable by worldliness, it's Rak Adayim Tzor, it's Kamini Madregis. There must be a variety of intermediate steps. Rol Madrega Gahaga Voya, every higher step. Hamachayes Shalamata, a man that gives life to what's lower than it, to Rak Bechinas Shem, is a name compared to that higher step. And of course, Vakulam Imenu Yizbarach, everything comes from Hashem. And a higher level is above a lower level. And the investment of that higher level in a lower level is only a name of that higher level. And since there are many steps to the Tzimtzumim, there's Lifnei Tzimtzum, there's Lachara Tzimtzum, there's Before Atzilas, there's In Atzilas, there's Meichen of Atzilas, there's Midas of Atzilas. And of course there's Atzilas in the lower worlds. So every lower world compared to a higher world requires another Tzimtzum and another shame. For the Yesh Kam Yishinurim Be'elim is there all kinds of change in the worlds. 180, line 100 of Hine. We explained that Hashem may neklom, can I get to Atzmias? The name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or the name of any level of Elokus, is nothing when compared to the etzim of that Madrego, Kefaz Nechshav Echol. But Lachain, which is why the Pasuk says, Lachu Chazu Mephalas Take a look. Hashem made worlds, and we're all very impressed. The worlds are awesome. The worlds are amazing. That He HaPli Yahagadela, it's an incredible wonderment. 
Shu ain't say Baruch Hu Hashem in His infinity Amhava. Kol HaElam has created all of the worlds, and not only created them once upon a time, but Tomit every instant that we recreated again. Meayin liyesh from a non-existential state into an independently existential state. Bedibure through words, and then you come along and you say Asher Shom Shamas Ba'Ares Lashon Shmama. That even though the worlds are incredible, even the physical universe is amazing. And to think that this is the lowest of many worlds, and that there are worlds above it that are much, much higher and more precise and more perfect until you have actual worlds that are called Ein Seir. And all of them are created from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And at the same time, you say, Shamas Lashen Shmama, from the word desolation, meaning to say, Sheba Emes, that the truth is, Afilu Kol HaElmas, take any world you want, Mirech Kol Dargen V'chulu, from the highest levels to the lowest levels. Izrak Shmama, Neged, that's what he is, when compared to what Hashem is, is Shimama. Shmoin is nothing. In other words, in, to use the form that we had before, since the investment of Hashem in this world, it's not even a name. It's Heide Vezive Shel Shmeal Erez Veshamoyim. So the investment of the Abishta in the world, compared to what Hashem in truth is, is Shamus, is nothing. Vahainu, why is this? Lefisha Chayuso Murakma Bechinath Shemus. The worlds exist only from the names of Akadish Baruchu. Moreover, the names of Akadish Baruchu do not give. To the worlds directly, a ha'ara of that name, a ha'ara de ha'ara, a heid v'ziv, and a ha'ara of shmei is a letter to shamay. As it says in the pasuk and brought in the gemara, ki b'kav ayet zori lamim, the pasuk says the Eibush creates the world with yud k, and the gemara says the chazal say be yud nevi lam habuchol, the higher words created with the yud, lower words created with hey, and so on and so forth. Concludes the Rebbe now on line one eighty nine, having journeyed for how long? For the last 80 lines approximately, in the concept of Eid and Shem, and argue that on the one hand, Eid and Shem are so extraordinary they can create worlds. On the other hand, Eid and Shem are so peripheral, so superficial that the Chutzliyat, Samaj only Ha'arami Menu, and so on and so forth. So now we get back to the original point. In last week's class, we talked about the incredible superiority of a Neshama over a Malach. That a neshama is Kaddish and a Malach is not Kaddish. But now we're saying the other side of that coin, that as great as a neshama is, it's only Yishtabach Shem, which translates to Rebbe. Shekol hu aliyas, all of the ascent, shal bechinas Kaddish and mechayim yaluch asal, then all neshamas that ascend every single day, constantly. And as the Rebbe said in last week's class, not like Malacham that have a fixed time to say shira. They can say shira anytime they wish. So the Shamas are constantly rising, says the Rebbe, no matter how superior, no matter how great is the various ascents of the Nishama, it's Eine Ella Bebechin as Shimcha Vachulu, it's only a name of a Kaddish Baruch. Valachain, which is why Omar the Siddur says, Beide Gedeshim Ishtab Shimcha. Only when the Nishama is created as a Briya, which is called Kaddish, is relating to the names of a Kaddish Baruch. The neshama is as created as a nivra, as a creation. And in as much as it's a nivra, it's relating only to Yishtabach Shemcha, to the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not to the essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In other words, why does the neshama have to come into this world? And the Maimed is saying, because it's Yerida Tzerech Aliyah. The concept of Yerida Tzerech Aliyah is because the neshama before it descends into this world can relate to godliness, but only to the godliness that gives it life and energy, a ha'ara, only to the um, level of godness, which is Heidi, Vezive, Shel Shmoy, Al Eretz Veshamoyim, the essence of Elokos, and even the name of Elokos escapes it and therefore comes out into this world for the sake of Yidit Seirach But that's only talking about a Nisham or some Adreg of Beirik Desh. Now I don't want to elaborate too much on this, especially since um, I didn't research this point tonight and it's, it's a little bit sensitive. But at least to explain it very, very briefly. Hashem creates everything. Hashem does not only create malachim. Hashem creates malachim. I'm sorry, create neshamas. Hashem creates neshamas. Hashem creates malachim. Hashem creates worlds. Hashem creates everything. And of course, everything that Hashem created, before He created, it was one with Him. It says in Kabbalah, a called Shai Re'edi, He writes, and it's brought in Chesidus, that in Malchus of Atzilis, which is the source of the lower three worlds, you have a word for every creation that's going to exist in Bia. In other words, since Malchus of Atzilis is going to create Tapuach in Bria, you can call Malchus of Atzilis 
tapuach. Since Malchus Avatilis is going to create Esrik, you call Malchus Avatilis Esrik. How many names does it have? As many as there are creations in the lower world, which is a virtual infinity. So everything is created by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And before it's created by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, all that he's going to make is one with him. So what's so unusual about Yigdashim? What's so unusual about the concept of Hashem creating an Hashem? And again, the answer is, basically, because all creations before Hashem created them are not creations, they're godliness. An Hashem before Hashem created it is also godliness. And an Hashem after Hashem created it continues to be godliness. As we've had opportunity to discuss over the years, it's called the Lakus Shanasa Nivra. An Hashem that exists down here is two opposites at the same time. It's a limited creation on the outside, on the one hand, and it's an infinite part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu on the inside, on the other. In other words, all creations that are limited, that are klipa, that have a teva, like a malach or a world, in Atzilas, they're Atzilas, and in the lower worlds, they're independent, they're yesh. A neshama in Atzilas is a lakus, and in Bria, it's a lakus in a state of Bria. So the concept of Bayer Gedoshim is a dichotomy, it's two opposites. On the one hand, even after it's boyed, it's still Kedosh. Even after Hashem created it, it's still holy. You wouldn't say the same thing about an apple and an esri. And on the other hand, this Kedusha is limited to the condition of Bria. The way the Abish creates it, it's limited. Or to say it in other words, when you meet on a Shama, you see limitation. But when you study on a Shama, you discover that this Neshama, with its limitation, is free, is in a position to be matter as atzvah mi beis ha'asturim, to exceed its own limitation. Most creations, the Abish creates them with a nature, the Abish creates them with a limit, the Abish creates them with a klipa, and they can't do anything about it. They're stuck in that state. A neshama is taka a a creation which is limited, but it's kedeshim, even after it's made into a creation, it still has the possibility to exceed that creation. But we say bayre kedesh, the neshama, after it's been created as a nivra, that even though, even after it's been created as a nivra, it's still true that it's a lakus shenas a nivra. The neshama is still a lakus. Nevertheless, because it's been created, it has, at least on the outside, a limited state. As the neshama has been created as a bria, it has some kind of a limitation. And therefore, Yishtabach Shimcha, it relates only to the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and not to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bechavei Devi Atzmei Debish himself. And the Rebbe explains the concept of bria by talking about Chochma. Line 192, the Pasuk says, Chochma is created from a non-existential state into an existential state. And the Rebbe, of course, develops the idea in the next few lines that many levels are created by the levels prior to them gradually, in a step-by-step way, in an orderly fashion. Bina is created from Chochma, Das is created from Bina, and Chesed is created from Das, and Gvura from Chesed, and Tesfet is from Gvura, in a systematic step-by-step way, where you wouldn't call it new creation, you would simply call it Ilovayolu. Gilia Helam, revealing a possibility. Masha'enkin, Chochma, for me, safe as Yesh Meyayin. And of course, again, the Chiddush is that since you're talking about Neshamas and not Nevroim, even after they created Yesh Meyayin, there's still a Lakos. Ki, Peter. Ki Esav, as a Chochma, the way Hashem creates Chochma, from higher than Chochma. Since Jewish Eishes Ha'ishtashel, since the beginning of the chain reaction of worlds, so the way Chochma is created me ain't safe, Baruchu, from what's ain't safe, ain't me Ishtashel, so me Chochma mat. Is quite different, is fundamentally different between what happens between Chochma and Bin, and Bin and Chesed, and Chesed and Gevuda, and so on. Why? Shehu, that what happens, Me Chochma Lamata is dead, Echilav Yolu, follows the law of causality, of cause and effect. Kemoshal Ba'adam, using a person as an example. Shesh Beisechel Umidis, a person has intelligence, and a person has passion. And a person has thought, and a person has speech, and a person has deed. Because you have ideas in your brain, you have feelings in your heart. Because you have feelings in your heart, you have thoughts, practical thoughts in your head. And because you have practical thoughts, you have practical words that are spoken to make it and to see it through. And because you speak practical words, you can actually do it with pale, which is in your mice. But the point is that when you're talking about these levels, from understanding to feeling to thinking to speaking to doing, it's called ilvial cause and effect. What's the pshat? that the second level comes from the first, and the third comes from the second, and the fourth comes from the third, and so on. Says the Rebbe, the higher level actually manifests through a tzimtzum in the lower level, since they're all limited. So the higher level's limit is diminished further to come down to the lower level, and so on. 
Chayna, Mashal Vabadi, but thought comes out into speech. The Chayna Seichalumi, this idea is the feelings, the so forth. Says the Rebbe, Zewa Nikri Eshtalshlos. That's the concept of the chain reaction of worlds, which is called Elov Olu, cause and effect. Shubachinus Yesh Miyesh. One reality from another, they're both in the same basic world. So Elov Yalu, cause and effect, is a series of steps from a higher level to a lower level that are very predictable, like falling dominoes, because every level from the highest to the lowest are close enough to each other to say that when the higher goes to the lower, it actually gives some of itself to the lower in an intimate way. Says the Rebbe, as opposed to being created from a non existential state into an independently existential state. And accordingly, since the cause and effect are close, the cause itself, the is grasped and revealed in the effect. The same is true in Atsilis itself. Like you have any guys that came to Shem and Chof. The Pasuk says, that once Chachma exists, in order to create all the Sphiris and Midas and worlds after Chachma, it's, it's a simple matter, so to speak. Shekolus Haves, all steps of creation, are brought forth from a hidden state to a revealed state. Me, Bechinas Chachma, from the level of Chachma. Shebetchil Hayeklum, Yachar Bechinas Chachma, because initially we begin the begins in Chachma. Who Bechinas Samaimer Echad, which is considered the one utterance, Shabbat Yochali, but us with Hashem create everything. All the other nine utterances are included in Chachma. And then from Chachma, it radiates down into the creation. And I think it should be Lamailo. When Hashem chose to create the world, as the thought is one event that includes all of creation. But that is in general. And then, when the nine utterances during the six days. In other words, Chachma includes everything that's going to follow. But everything that's going to follow, the way it is in Chachma, is in a unified state. And then from Chachma, it diversifies into the many different aspects or facets. So the Rebbe brings the Zayar and the Medrash, and then as soon as they had a will, all the worlds came into being, because in Chochmah everything exists in a unified state, and then from Chochmah it radiates into the various different steps of creation, and varieties of creation, and aspects of creation. Says the Rebbe, however, line 206, Everything we described until now is about what happens once Chochmah exists. But the creation of Chachma itself is Yesh and Mamish. It's creating something which has some kind of independence from something else, which is, which is a non-entity, a non-existential entity. As I've told you so many times, it's simplistic to translate Yesh as something from nothing. Because as the quote goes, there's no such thing as nothing, not even in your head. Your head meaning me. From nothing you have nothing. So Yesh doesn't mean something from nothing. Yesh means something from something super. So why do we call it ayin? Because it's built in Musa. We don't understand it. So ayin isn't nothing. Ayin means a non-existential state, something which is above the level of Matthias, of the reality in which we live. And yesh ayin means that something comes into being from that non-existential state into an independently existential state in such a way that it's an entity unto itself um, that is separate from the ayin, which is its source. Le since. Godliness, infinity, is far beyond what Chochmah is. The manifestation of Chochmah remains safe. Is Bria Yesh Miyayin has to be created in a way that something independent is being created from something which is a non mitzvah non-existential. And in this case, it's Chochmah remains safe. Now, Baderach Klal, as a rule, we speak about Yesh Miyayin, we're talking about Bria, the lower worlds. Here he's speaking about Yesh Miyayin also in Atzilas, that even Chochma of Atzilas, which as discussed at, at length in Hemshech HaChodesh, in the beginning of Hemshech HaYim Beis, is called Atzilas, because it's Etzle V'Samoch, as Gilu V'Hel, Magabi Yein Tzav. On the other hand, it's Yesh Miyayin, Magabi Yein Tzav. And of course, in Samach Vav, he explains at length in what way Atzilas is Gilu V'Hel, and what way Atzilas is Yesh Miyayin. Says the Rebbe, as the Obedi Gedesh, that's the meaning of the Neshama being called Kodesh and Bria. That even though the Neshama was godliness before it was created, and it continues to be godliness after it was created. And Lakut Shanasa Nivra as opposed to everything else, but at the same time it's Beta. Peter. Shan Shom is Shalaba Mahshava the thought the souls, which are part of Hashem's thought. Shalhain Kaim Kadesh, which is why they're called holy. 
that all of them in their source is Chachma Vatzilus. comes to the mind of his father to be sure. Compared to how the Neshama is higher than Chachma and higher than Machshavit, created as an independent entity, removed from its source, which is Ayin, and the Ayin, which is the source of Chachma, is only the name of HaKadosh Baruch. So the Neshama is godliness. And even after it's created, it's still Kedusha. But it's coming from something much higher than its state as a Nivra, which is a Lakuz. And it's coming from something which is above its state as a Nivra, which is a Lakuz, which is called Ein Seif. And Ein Seif is only a name, only a Ha'ar. So as lofty as the Neshama is, it's Yesh Mayayin from Oyer. And therefore, even the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is above it. And therefore, Be'er G'deish Mishtab HaShem HaShem creates a Neshama and it's praising not HaShem himself because they can't relate to that. Praising the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Says the Rebbe on line 216, This is why the Neshama has to come into the Guf. Because even though the Neshama in Gan is such a lofty creation, it's above Malach and it recognizes and it relates to the Yen Seif and it praises it. But it's only Oyer and not Moir. Only the light and not the source. Moreover, it's not even the light. It's Ha'or of Shmei, which the Neshama knows. By coming down into this world, it experiences the Yidah Tzedek Aliyah, that is able to relate to Lakus on a much, much higher Madre. So let's just finish. This is the Shir. Kitzir. Kihine. Be'ere Kedesh. There's a phenomenon of Hashem creating creations that even after they're created, they're called Holy Shehem HaNeshama, which goes on the Neshama. V'hainu, and this is the pshat where it says in Siddur, in Kedusha, or Kedusha, or Kedusha, or that neshamas that are called holy can praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu constantly, and whenever they want, there's no constrictions. Restrictions. It's not like Malacham, they say, Bran Yachat Kech Vebechad, a specific time when they can say Shira. Im Kalsen, no matter how great this neshama is, his Savu Sum is Rakhba Bechinas Shimcha, it's only a name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shahu Inyan Ha'ara Bayalm, it's only a trace. Shanech Shav La'ayim Ve'ef, it's a Gabbat Musa Yisbarach. Even though compared to the Neshama which is created from name, the Ein Seif is Ayin beyond comprehension, compared to the Abish that it's insignificant, it's Ayin. The name of a person is nothing compared to the person himself. And this is the Pshat in the Pasuk and the Gemara, Hashem Shamas Ba'aretz. Al Tikka Shamas, Allah Shamas, that the whole investment of the Abish that into this world is something so superficial. Moreover, even Chach, which is source of the Shammah Yisrael, is also emerges from a non existential state into an independent existential state. In Chach, and nevertheless, the Ayin, which is its source, that's how the Shammah comes into existence. And when you consider that as great as the Shammah is, and as lofty as its prayer is, it's relating only to Oyer. It's not relating to etzem. It's relating only to giluyim. It's not relating to atzmos. This is why you have to have the union of yiridit seirachaliyah. And we'll continue with Hashem next time. Glinader.